to I Fish News Fishing Podcast. Your host, Glenn, City Valley Fishing Field Team, COAF Field Team, and where we learn to fish by our trials and errors. And well, this round, what do we got for you? We've got some cast net fixes. We've got some go fish cam camera talk, as well as kayak fishing, specifically jug lining, and some key things that we did this past few weeks. All right, so let's go right into it. Cast net fix. First piece that we have is did post a video on some well we've been wanting to and having some issues with a cast net that we picked up several years ago doing some temp fixes to it. Well, we snagged the bottom, ended up catching on some rocks, and we'd break a braille line, undo a braille line, and in several cases, the braille line actually broke higher up on the cast net. And we kind of been doing some quick fixes because we did it out in the field and needed to catch some bait no matter how. And so we would just do a quick joining of the braille line that broke together with the piece that was straggling up here. But over the course of that season, this season, well, kept hanging up a lot with those knots and the net wouldn't close up and we'd be losing our shad as well as we'd be tangling on the throw. So we can get a good circle when we cast. Ended up replacing the braille lines put out some video on how we did it and do check it out some things that we would change going forward one is we would look at the braille lines and kind of space them out uh, more evenly we went with the original braille line how it was set on the original cast net how it was uh, first put together and end up when we closed up the net we saw that there was one loop that was still or one section of the net that was still hanging out there and so we added a third or a thirteenth braille line. Well, let's call it fourteenth since we're kind of superstitious. Anyhow, um, I think another suggestion that someone threw at us, it is a good one. Attach the line that you're going to put through and run it through the little circles and hoops that you have at the top of the net and, and then attach it to the existing braille line. And then at that point, you would cut it. So that would kind of forego any need to thread the line through the different hoops and whatnot. So like that idea, I ended up having to do some adjusting of the lines to make sure that we had it through the right loop and the ones that were together were together going through the particular loop or hoop or whatever you call it. I think it's, uh, not sure what it's called. <laughs> well, we'll put a picture of it in the, in the video version of this podcast. All right. Um, let's see the goldfish cam we ended up ordering a goldfish camera ended up getting a twenty dollar discount by looking up a discount code that we found online and oh by the way they were offering a two-year loss prevention what prompted us was we we're trying to replace our old water wolf camera that we lost last season we were kayak fishing and it dropped overboard didn't have it secured properly and oh by the way we lost it and so we we're kind of bumming over that been doing different things with the gopros that we have and well, they're just not cutting it when it comes to some of the footage that we were getting with that Water Wolf camera. So we looked online. Unfortunately, Water Wolf wasn't available. And then we saw the Goldfish camera and kind of held off on purchasing it because the price. I think it was like 200 250 bucks back then. But we were able to get it now at $149. And then with that $20 discount, along with a two-year loss presentation of $49.99. So it would have come out to 200 bucks, and they've got a $20 discount, so about 180 We have a chance to, one, just use and abuse, abuse it. And if we do lose it, we do have a uh, loss prevention piece where you'll get one to replace for free by the manufacturer. Of course, I think it's you only get one, and you got to register it. And when you register it, make sure you look at the card. You take a picture of your receipt as well as the camera and set it into the email address that they provide it. And so far, we're liking what we're seeing. The wireless capability has some limitations where when you're underwater, it's going to lose connection. They also tend to lose connection if it goes too far from you. Maybe it's our phone. Maybe it's the, the app itself. But you may kind of freeze up on some of the uh, view. But uh, what we've been mainly using it for at this time has been non-wireless capability and just kind of dumping it into the water and trying to get those old uh, action shots that we had with the water wolf because we like doing some fish scouting in other words we'll go to a pond particular location that we've been eyeing and just want to see what's there and we'll either put some live bait or if we're looking for catfish some bread on a bread ball and put it on a circle hook drop it in there and see what comes up and we were surprised especially with that water wolf being able to just go to different places that we didn't think had fish and sure enough there were fish actually some nice size one so that's how we tend to use the underwater camera 
another tool in our scouting ability to get out there and check out some ponds that maybe they are worthwhile to give it a try. Also, some of the things that we, we noticed was when you're using these cameras and the clarity isn't really there, you've got to get the, the hook closer to the camera to get that footage. You can play around with the video settings, but the main thing that you want to do with these things is one to get that action shot of course to see what's striking but also see how they're striking there are several times in the past where we were doing some kayak trolling at a local lake and able to see our jig or our slab getting strikes and the whole time we're thinking we're not getting anything but there's fish following it there's fish nipping at it and we can see that either the, the they're kind of just hesitant in striking or uh, they are striking, they're getting hooked, but they're coming off the hook. So we'll make some adjustments there. Maybe it's something simple as adding a trailer to it or, or something. But it's good to see that as well as good to know that, especially when you're hitting bottom, you can see that there's some rocky bottoms that you're hitting, some sandy bottoms, some brushy ones as well. And so that's what we mainly like using these GoFish or at least these underwater cameras, and in particular the GoFish one that we purchased. From some adjustments that we plan on doing, well, we'll probably adjust our rigging so that we can see more on the bottom because we were tending to do at least the local pond that we hit up recently is, is we were having to contend with turtles, a lot of turtles. Uh, for some reason, as soon as you had the float hit the water, the bait hit the water, the camera, whatever an indication of something splashing in the water, turtles would show up within a few minutes. And guess what? They were faster than the bass, so the bass weren't getting the bait as well as some of the other fish that were there. So some adjustments we'll probably make is, is if we can get it down below, I think we'll be able to keep those turtles away long enough that maybe we might get a decent basket on that hook and we might get that shot. Alrighty, so that's the go fish cam camera. Next up, jug lining. So, uh, well, we've been itching, wanting to go kayak fishing uh, more often than not in the summertime. It's been hot, it's been wet. Uh, it's been windy, and then yours truly hurt his hand recently, or not too recently, and uh, now it's good to go now. Or at least feels better that we can go kayaking again. So, did make that trip this past Saturday to our local lake, Lake Levon, and because we had that cast net fixed, we were able to get shad for bait fairly easy, uh, about two, three casts, and we were there. Had enough bait to make it for the whole uh, session. And then uh, once we got where we were going and had our jug lines out, initial bite was, was pretty good, real real fast. We got to about 8 o'clock, and about the first hour, there were just uh, constant bites, strikes, and whatnot, and we were having to do a lot of rebaiting. And then it died down a little bit. As the temps got hotter, uh, things kind of slowed down. We were having to continually check our baits, though, or our jug lines and rebaiting. Several times, ended up getting, oh, had that little yellow bass that took, and we had to throw him back because... Oh, you can't keep yellow bass or non-game fish, or you can only keep non-game fish as well as catfish. Take something on a jug line, so I had to throw that one back, be it yellow bass. We've caught crappie before, we've caught white bass, and all those cases, you got to let them go. Let's see. Did get a gar, too. That was pretty interesting. I uh, had to put a, a fairly good-sized uh, shad on there. I think it was about maybe six inches, four to six inches, and oh, by the way, that thing took it. Didn't even really know he was on the line until went and checked it because it was just kind of slowly moving in here and there and guess what a little bit over three foot gar and that was a pretty fun one there we got some good video there of of that happening and, and of course you didn't get the point of view video because yours truly accidentally deleted the video from the gopro camera but did we get it from the other camera that we use from another angle and at least was able to salvage some video from that trip to get the essence of being able to see what we did that that round and maybe there was a few things to learn to fish from our trials and errors in this case maybe something simple as i think there was one of them that we were showing how we tend to launch our or deploy our jug lines on the windward side so you put you put your jug line on the windward side of your kayak the wind blows you away from the jug line so you don't tangle into it but of course uh, it didn't get too windy at all so we were able to play with uh, different angles and whatnot just to get our jug line to get that catfish in the boat also in that video we did use the uh, line clip or those shower clips a lot we mainly use those shower clips on the tennis ball line stringer for smaller catfish if we get a good size one then there's some rubber tubing that we'll put on to help secure the shower clip in place so that the catfish doesn't get off uh, and if it's definitely a bigger one we'll definitely uh, hold off on using that shower clip because 
we've had it in the past where we tended to or almost lost a few of them that way. So we like the tennis ball fishing float. We like the line clips because you put the fish on the clip while it's in the kayak or in the boat. And then once you have it on the stringer, then you release it into the water. And since we've done that, we haven't lost any fish that way. If we do lose any fish, it's because we had it over the water versus over the boat. Do check out that video. It's a little bit longer than some of our other videos, but I think uh, you'll get the essence of what we did that day. There was three of us out there that round, and uh, definitely was a fun day. Unfortunately, we did lose a guy, uh, a jug line. Saw the, the jug go under, and I didn't see it come up. And then at some point, I saw it look like it was getting ready to come back up again, and then went back down again. And we're not able to see it come back up again. So we're thinking it was probably a good-sized gar that took it. And maybe somehow when we go back out there, it may be floating somewhere and be able to retrieve it again. But bummer that we lost that jug line. It's one of our favorite ones, that one that we picked up from Academy, the Jugger Jug Lines. Okay, so all for now. Hope I all are able to get some or glean some lessons learned from this round. And this round, it was cast net fixes that fixing those braille lines we posted that video the go fish cam do stay tuned for some more of that go fish cam underwater scouting fishing scouting and then kayak fishing particularly jug lighting all right upcoming things that we'll be doing this is just to be noticed as the go fish scouting also we're going to be playing with some of those fishing flies did go out the other day with that bennett's lunch local pond over here at bethany and well didn't get any uh, bites there kind of bite was slow it was really hot that day went later in the day Ended up getting a couple of sunfish or bluegill on a foam spider. So we didn't strike out. Tend to get more striks with the Bennett Lunch with a striped bass. We're up at Denison Dam with the stripers and white bass. But we're hoping we can see if we can get one over here at one of our local lakes using that pattern. Because that is a very good pattern. And let's see. And then other things. We're still looking at uh, going back to Denison Dam for some gars, or some stripers. And since we got some good cast net now, hopefully we'll be able to maintain some good shad for bait when we're up there because that seems to be the bait of choice when you're there. And then finally, that Velcro fix that we mentioned on a skeg that we put on a kayak, we're going to have to continue testing there because the adhesive on the Velcro isn't as good as it is when it comes to hot temps and putting it in the water, they tend to come off. So we're going to think of some other solutions from an adhesive standpoint, but we still want to use that Velcro piece because we like the ability to be able to take that skeg off without having to remove the base, leave it there, but at the same time being able to take that base off and not worry about that marine glue because we do have some of that 3M marine 5200 silicone and well we've used it before and it's a permanent solution so you gotta make sure you really want that there and in this case well my significant other still likes that pelican catch 100 even if it doesn't have a skeg currently all right so all for now thanks for joining us and hope you guys check in again we'll probably do this again while well, we're trying to do this weekly and give you updates as we do our thing out there doing some fishing things and like we said Hopefully, you guys can learn to fish by our trials and errors. All right, next time we'll catch y'all there. Good luck and good fishing.